Hello, my name is Curtis Wolf, director at the Kansas Wetlands Education Center at Cheyenne Bottoms in Barton County, and I kill birds. All kidding aside, it pains me to say this, as I work in one of the most diverse bird, bird hotspots in the state, and it is a bit depressing or painful for me to give this program today, as the results that I'm going to be um, talking about literally go against everything we preach at the Education Center. Today I'm going to talk about a 10-year monitoring effort that we've done at the Wetland Center regarding window bird strikes. However, I will also talk about hopefully some plans that we have in place to bring light to this problem and hopefully improve our bird killing record in the near future. Now it's been, a, it, it's been realized for quite a long time that birds will and do run into windows. Bird window collisions have been identified as a major human-induced threat to birds and estimates of 100 million to 1 billion bird mortalities per year in the United States have been linked to window collisions, which place it second only behind feral cats as a human influence cause of bird mortality. About half of all window collisions result in the death of the bird. However, we often do not know what the extent of the injuries are and the actual long-term fate of some collisions. Obviously, the bane of windows is the fact that they create a solid yet transparent barrier or they reflect outdoor images that can't be deciphered as a mere reflection by flying birds. The Kansas Wetlands Education Center opened in April of 2009 and we really do some incredible things to promote wildlife and birds, environmental education, and interpreting Cheyenne bottoms. However, the architecture of the KWEC building is not as bird friendly as we would, would like it to be. While the back of the building is very conducive to visitors being able to look out uh, over the expansive mitigation marsh to the south and the east, the more than 80 large windows over uh, around the building prov prove to be more than just hard to keep clean. They also present a pretty severe hazard to our feathered friends. Now, these, um, these walls of glass are all too common in modern architecture, and unfortunately, there are many examples of buildings just like ours that are posing a similar effect on, on many uh, species of birds. Now, shortly after the center opened in 20, 2009, we noticed several uh, bird window collisions. We decided it was worth turning into a monitoring project and started recording all collisions that we observed whether they resulted in a death or not. For each collision, we recorded the date of the collision, the species, window location, and whether or not it resulted in a fatality. From 2010 to 2019, we recorded 142 total window strikes, with just more uh, than half of those being observed as fatal. Now, our records were quite circumstantial and not a systematic survey uh, where we would regularly search the grass surrounding the building for carcasses, so it is likely that we were missing a number of collisions. However, this fatality rate that we observed of 52% uh, fell pretty close to the generally reported figure uh, in other studies that about half of all window strikes are fatal. Unfortunately, we have um, developed a pretty lengthy species richness in uh, the 142 total window strikes that we've observed. Uh, 27 species in all have been recorded in collisions at KWAC, and 20 of those species, um, there we go, uh, 20 of those species had at least one fatality shown by the, the, the bolded uh, species names on this, this table. Uh, barn swallows had our most total strikes, followed by American tree sparrows, red-winged blackbirds, dark-eyed juncos, and American goldfinches. Interestingly, the bird uh, groups that we recorded with the highest strike incidences, swallows, blacks, blackbirds, and sparrows, are all listed as below average vulnerability to collision mortality in comparison to other bird groups by a study that Loss et al. did in 2015. This graph just shows the same information as the previous table in a graphical form. However, I'd like to point out that while barn swallows have had the most total strikes, most of their strikes have not been fatal as um, they have only the third most fatalities um, listed. You also can see in the line graph on this graph that while some of the species have had collisions most years, 
No species that we've recorded has collisions recorded every year in the 10-year study. Now this figure shows the strikes and fatalities that re re we recorded per year at KWEC, with the highest number of strikes and fatalities being in 2011. Now fatalities uh, were not significantly different over these 10 years, but in general the trend line for collisions has decreased since 2010. And I'll also point out that during the drought years of 2012 and 2013, we did see lower fatalities, which corresponded to an overall lower bird abundance that we, reserve, we observed in the area during those years. Um, throughout the, the year, we tend to see uh, the most collisions happen in the months of December, January, and February, with another small increase uh, in June and August. In terms of seasons, this corresponds to most collisions seemingly occurring with winter and summer resident birds, as opposed to seeing a lot of migrants impacting our windows during the spring and fall. With the incredible migration that we see through Cheyenne Bottoms, I guess the fact that we are not seeing many spring and fall migrant species showing up on our collision list, maybe that's, that is, could be seen as a fortunate silver lining uh, in our data. Uh, when we started recording collisions, we thought it would be interesting to record where on the building the collisions were happening. So that um, we so we went about by numbering the, the sections of windows across the back of the center and recorded which window section the collisions occurred in. We hoped that if only one or a couple window areas were causing the majority of the collisions, we could target those areas to help remedy our problem in the simplest way possible. However, we have found that all window sections have produced collisions and fatalities, and the fatality numbers were not significantly different among the different window sections. From the graph, you may notice that windows 7, 8, and 9 have the highest incidences of collisions, which can probably be attributed to these windows' proximity to our front desk, where there is typically always a staff person seated. Consequently, it's much more likely that the collisions are going to be observed at these three windows, whereas at other locations around the building, we're more reliant on finding the bird's carcass to identify a strike. This may suggest that we are missing a lot of non-fatal collisions in other parts of the building. So in conclusion, KWEC has observed 142 total bird window collisions in a 10-year period, with a fatality percentage of just over half which corresponds with documented fatality rates of bird window collisions that have been reported elsewhere. Abundant bird species, especially summer and winter resident species, appear to be more prone to window strikes at KWEC. Fortunately, bird strikes at KWEC have shown a slight decline over the 10-year study period. And, unfortunately, no single window location at KWEC seems to be having higher window strike incidences than other windows. Now, this is an issue that we, we really do need to continue to monitor at KWEC. And, if nothing else, presenting this data um, at this meeting has rejuvenated me to look into a more permanent solution to help, help out uh, the problem at KWEC. As most of you know, numerous solutions are out there for how to combat window uh, bird collisions. However, I haven't really found a particular so solution that is perfect. Finding a solution that is one, effective at reducing the collisions, two, cost effective, three, maintenance effective, and uh, four, not terribly intrusive, and finally five, that's just logical, is easier said than done. I do encourage you to visit the American Bird Conservancy's website that they have on preventing uh, bird window collisions, which provides some excellent resources on the subject. Now, we have seriously looked into several of these solutions that are listed on, on that website and others. Now, I'm not a real big fan of netting uh, due to the intrusiveness of, the, of this look, as well as the maintenance and longevity problems that netting um, would, would present due to winds in this area. Um, so we haven't actually gone with netting. Window decals seem pretty effective, but being able to clean the windows around them and then placing enough decals on the windows to be effective seem to be um, pretty ineffective and inefficient. Um, a window uh, film called Solix with uh, printed lines 
has been proven quite effective uh, in tests and has shown some promise with our application. Um, it seems less intrusive than many of the other solutions. However, I received a price quote from one glass company to install this particular film on 53 of the windows on the back of KWEC. Um, that quote was in 2017. And the estimated bill came to $30,000 to put that film on. And the other problem is the lifespan of that film, uh, they documented as only being about 10 years before it would have to be replaced. Um, I was recently informed about a device called an Acopian Bird Saver uh, that, is, that people can make just using paracord. Now this solution seems pretty simple and cost effective, and I think it possibly has a, a there's a possibility for using this at the center. Overall, I think that we have an opportunity to turn a very negative situation at KWEC into a great educational opportunity. You know, maybe our solution is, is, uh, is that we have a test of a combination of different solutions, um, and by using our baseline collision data that we've taken so far in these first 10 years, we can effectively monitor and then rank the effectiveness of several different bird window collision solutions. I look forward to looking into those and in, and in the near future hopefully presenting some of those findings to this group soon. I would like to thank the KWEC staff for helping track these window strikes over these last 10 years. Um, I also would like to thank uh, Lauren Jarbo and Kirsten Granstrom Arndt, both Fort Hayes graduate students in biological sciences and KWEC graduate students for their help uh, in analyzing the data and helping put together this presentation. Um, so, please let me know if you have any questions or comments by posting in the comments section of this, of this program, and I thank you for your time.